Hello. We're going to work on 4.5, finding probability using tree diagrams and outcome tables. We've already mentioned and used tree diagrams. This will give us more detail about what's behind them. Behind them. Friday, May 22nd. Goals. Create tree diagrams and use them to determine the probability of an event. List outcomes for the given event spaces. Note number one, a tree diagram lists all of the possible outcomes of an event. We use tree diagrams to find the probability of a specific event. A branch of the tree diagram gives us the outcomes for a specific event. And using the tree diagram below, we can identify the following, the specific event, all of the possible outcomes, and the possible outcomes from flipping a coin, or sorry, flipping a head first. By looking at the outcomes listed, we can tell that the specific event is flipping a coin. We can look at the end of each branch to tell that this was the outcome of a coin flip number one. And these were the possible outcomes of coin flip number two. All of the possible outcomes. The ends in this rectangle are the outcomes listed by looking at the end of each branch. So following this first branch way at the top, you have the head, head. Follow the top branch and then down below, you have a head followed by a tail. Follow the bottom branch, tail followed by a head. And then the bottom branch along the bottom branch is a tail, tail. So where head, head is H, H. Head, tail is H, tail or H, T. Tail, head is T, H and tail tail is TT. The possible outcomes are HH, HT, TH, TT. What we haven't mentioned is the fact that we consider a HT separate from a TH. So the order here is not of importance to us. Okay? In other words, we consider this outcome separate from this outcome. Okay, so they're two separate outcomes, even though um, the order typically isn't very important. What are the possible outcomes from flipping a head first? So flipping a head first you have a possible head to follow or a possible tail to follow. So a head first could lead you with a head head outcome or a head tail outcome. Example one. Draw a tree diagram that shows all the possible outcomes of answering three true-false questions. What you should notice is that question one is very similar to question the question of flipping a coin because true-false has only two outcomes just as a flipping a coin does. Make a dot to show where you've started true for t, f for false. So you have a true or a false in question number one. Question two, you could answer true false. In question three, you could answer a true-false, a true-false, a 
true false or a true false. It doesn't mean though that in question three you could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ways to answer question three. It simply means that these ends are a combination of the previous answers that you would have given. Okay? So although there are eight outcomes, it means that those outcomes are a result of the way in which you answered the previous two questions. B. How many possible outcomes are there in total? Well, we counted them up. Total outcomes is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All a result of combinations of true and falses. You could think of this as two to the power of three, where two is the number of choices, and three represents the number of questions. C. List the outcomes for each event space below, selecting the true first. So C, I. So if I select a true first, okay, I could select a true for my second question followed by a true. select a true first for my first question followed by a true false select a true for my first question followed by a false true select a true for my first question followed by a false false so the outcomes for each event space below selecting outcomes Oops, a daisy. Outcomes for selecting a true first. So it could be a true, true, true. It could be a true, true, false. It could be a true, false, true, or it could be a true, false, false. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. What are the outcomes for each event space below? In double I, selecting a false for the first two questions. So, I want to select a false for the first two questions. So this is question one, this is question two. So question one, I'd have to select a false, and then I'd have to select a false again, okay? This branch does not give me a false for the first, for the first two questions. So I can't go along this branch here, okay? It disqualifies itself because it doesn't match the criteria. So if I selected a false for the first two questions, my branch would lead me with a true for the third question. But I could select the false for the first two questions followed by a false in the third question. So 
so I could have a false, false, true, or I could have a false, 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 reading these branches all the way to the end. All right. D. What is the probability of getting one correct answer? I'm going to have to do this on a separate piece of paper. Okay. So if I think about these options in terms of correct or not correct in D, so correct is C not correct is NC. Okay, so here's my start. I could be correct in question one or not correct in question two. I could be correct in question Two, not correct. But it follows after being not correct, I could be correct in question two, and also I could also be not correct in question two. Question three, after being correct and correct in question one and two, I could be correct in question three, but I could also be not correct in question three after being correct and not correct in question one and question two, I could be correct in question three, but I could also be not correct in question three. After being not correct in question one and correct in question two, I could be correct in question three or not correct in question three. After not being correct in question one and not correct in question two, I could be correct in question three or not correct in question three. So to answer the question, what is the probability that I have one correct answer? One correct answer. Okay, so one correct answer. This is correct in one answer, but then I would have to be uncorrect or not correct in the other two questions. So not correct here and not correct here. If I want one correct answer, I could be not correct here. I could be correct here, that's my desired outcome, but I could also follow not to be correct here. If I want one correct answer, I could not be correct here. I could not be correct here, but I could be correct here. So to find the individual probabilities for a single branch, I have to consider what's the probability of getting a correct out of two possible outcomes is one out of two. I could be not correct out of two possible outcomes, that would be one out of two. My desired outcomes here would be the same. I would want to, I'd want to be correct here out of the two possible outcomes. Here I'd not, I'd not want to be correct, so I would not want to be correct once out of two possible outcomes. And the probabilities are consistent for the next branches that follow. All right, so if in D I follow down this path, I have one half times one half times one half, This is D1, let's call it D1. This would be D2, so I could be not correct, followed by correct, followed by correct. One half times one half times one half. Add the separate branches together. Okay, so you're adding the branches together. One half times one half times one half. 
would be d2. And then to get to d3, I'd be 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. Add the separate branches together, 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. That would be d3. So I'd have 1 half times 1 half times 1 half is 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth would give me a total of 3 eighths. So I'd have less than a 50% chance of getting one correct answer. All right, let's do E. E says, what is the probability of getting two correct answers? So right now I want to be correct. So I could be correct here, followed by correct here, but not correct here. Okay, so that would be E, E1. I could be correct here. I could not be correct here, but I could be correct here. Be E2. I could not be correct here, question one, I could be correct for question two, and I could be correct for question three, all because I have the criteria of two correct answers, right? So that's E2, sorry, that's E3, because I'm there, I'm there, E3, now I'm there, I could be not correct, not correct. I could only be correct here once, so that would be a problem. So I think I've already gotten to all the ones I needed. So I could be correct, followed by correct, followed by not correct. That would be this one. I could be correct, not correct, and correct to get that. And this one I could be correct, correct, and not correct. So I'd have one half, one half, one half. I don't need brackets there. So that would be E1. Add the branches separately. So E2 would be a half, a half, a half. That would be E2. Add the branches separately, E3, a half, a half, a half. So the branch in and of itself requires you to multiply the probabilities of each branch to get to the final outcome, but then separate branches have to be added. Get one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth is three eighths. So you have less than a 50% chance of getting two correct answers.